What's the secret to plants' resilience? The answer lies beneath our feet. Today, let's explore the hidden world of root anatomy. Roots are the unseen architects of the plant kingdom, providing both anchorage and absorption of water and nutrients from the soil. Roots are remarkable structures. They can expand to store food, like in sweet potatoes or carrots, and they can reach incredible depths, like in the South African shepherd's tree, whose roots are longer than the Tower of Pisa. I'm Dr. Joyce Onyanadum, and I'm a botany professor at NYU. Welcome to Build a Plant, my video series where we discuss the hot topic of plant anatomy. Roots evolved independently in several major plant lineages during the Devonian, 416 to 360 million years ago, when plants first colonized land. They were a crucial adaptation for structural stability and enhanced water and nutrient acquisition in this new terrestrial environment. In turn, roots pave the way for complex plant life, altering the ecosystems that they occupy. Root growth begins with the primary root, formed during embryo development and is driven by the activity of the root apical meristem, also known as the ram, near the tip of the root. If we examine a longitudinal section of an Arabidopsis primary root apex, it can be divided into four distinct developmental zones. Near the tip is the meristematic zone, a region of actively dividing cells. It contains a stem cell niche, or SCN, a group of cells that remain undifferentiated and divide asymmetrically to produce daughter cells. As they get pushed out from the SCN and meristematic zone, they pass through the transition zone, where they undergo physiological changes as they prepare for elongation, forming central vacuoles and remodeling their cell walls. In the elongation zone, the cells will lengthen dramatically in a very short time frame and begin to differentiate. Finally, the differentiation zone is where the cells will complete elongation and differentiation, characterized by the development of root hairs. Which of these zones overlaps with the RAM is a matter of debate. Some researchers use RAM and meristematic zone interchangeably. Others will say the RAM and SCN are synonymous. Some define the RAM as all cells that are actively dividing and capable of differentiation. And that can even vary between species. But what we can all agree is that the cells in the late elongation zone and differentiation zone are no longer meristematic. Unlike the shoot, which we'll explore in our next episode, the ram produces cells in both directions, towards the plant axis, forming the main body of the root, and away from the plant axis, forming the root cap. The root steel, or vascular tissue, also has a unique structure that can differ from most shoots. We'll explore shoots in a later video, don't worry about it. This cross-section from Patrickium virginianum demonstrates that roots have a protosteel, or alternating xylem and phloem strands without a pith. The shape of this protosteel depends on the number of protoxylum poles, which can range from two to so many that they form a star shape. Outside of the protosteel, we find the pericycle, which is sheathed by the endodermis, known for its Casparian strip that filters what can and cannot enter the root vasculature. As the plant grows, some cells within the primary root gain the ability to divide and form new roots, called lateral roots. These lateral roots are formed post-embryonically, exclusively from paracyclic cells located opposite of the protoxylum poles deep within the primary root. These lateral roots grow outwardly, significantly expanding the root system's surface area and strength, allowing the plant to better explore and anchor itself in the soil. Now that we've explored the basic structure and development of roots, let's dive into some of the examples of extreme root anatomical adaptations that plants have evolved to survive and thrive in their environments. Mangroves, typically found in coastal wetland ecosystems, have evolved specialized roots whose upper portion remains aerial, suspended above ground to help with gas exchange, since mangroves grow in inundated environments. On an anatomical level, there are two features that allow these aerial roots to be so good at gas exchange. First is the abundance of lenticels, tiny pores that develop from parenchymata cells in the cortical region. Second is arenchyma, tissue filled with large air spaces that account for up to 70% of the root's volume. The lenticels and arenchyma work together in the aerial roots to supply oxygen to the underground portions which are submerged in water. 
Epiphytic plants, such as epiphytic orchids, are known for their adventitious roots, or post-embryonic roots that develop from stems, leaves, or other vegetative non-root organs. Adventitious roots can form either constitutively or due to stress from paracyclic cells that are predetermined for root formation in the stems. They facilitate plant anchorage, allowing plants to develop vertically and explore aerially in the canopy. Cycads have evolved specialized fibers that allow for contractile roots, which aid in anchoring these plants securely in the soil during seedling establishment. We got to see them in action in Dr. Dennis Stevenson's lab at the New York Botanical Garden. The fibers are gelatinous and occur in the root's secondary flow. They have unique cell wall features that allow them to contract and pull the roots deeper into the soil. Let's recap. Roots are vital structures in plants, providing anchorage and absorption. Root growth starts with the primary root, driven by the root apical meristem, the ram, near the tip. Cells move through four developmental zones as they mature and differentiate. At the center of the root, you'll find a protostele surrounded by the pericycle, which is crucial for forming lateral roots that enhance the root system's surface area and strength. And encasing it all is the endodermis, providing a filtration system for the entire plant. Extreme root anatomy can be found throughout the plant kingdom, reflecting different adaptations to harsh environments. Root anatomy research can lead to improved crop breeding for better water and nutrient uptake, enhancing food security, and reducing environmental impact. Next time you're outside, take a moment to appreciate the hidden world beneath your feet.